But there's one chart that has caught the attention of the community and of the Kaaba board and of the Kaaba members. And it's this chart that plots educational attainment versus median household income. And of the benchmark communities that the consulting firm chose to benchmark Kenosha against, Kenosha ranked pretty much dead last in median household income and educational attainment. Uh, the report suggests that this is a bad thing. I'd like to have each of you comment about how bad is it and what can we do about it. And let's start with Rebecca. I love the saying, think on your feet, so here I am thinking on my feet. Um, I think there's definitely a, co a correlation between, uh, it's, it's proven in the studies obviously, so I concur with that. Um, in my work with Kenosha Unified, one of the things that I was, I was a homeschool liaison, so I did a lot of social work. Uh, the issue that brought me into that was truancy issues um, with our children at the elementary level. As I said, what I, my children were there, I have a 27-year-old and I have a 13-year-old and then I have 24 and 18 in between. So I was at McKinley Elementary for many years. What I saw, the change that I saw was the higher poverty levels that we encountered at the school, the more need there was. The, the uh, parents were less educated, uh, many of them struggling just to make it from day to day. So there's definitely, and, and they didn't have the education opportunities, so there's definitely that problem there. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see us implement, and we've done a lot of things with our parent network, I was also an organizer for our parent network in the schools. We created opportunities for parenting classes. Uh, one of them that I was extremely proud of with my success um, was called Strengthening Families. Now that was through uh, a grant through the governor's office. It was a six-week opportunity for children and families to come together at McKinley Elementary. I'm happy to say we, we partnered with social services as well. So we're really good at partnering um, and working together to create opportunities for parents and children. Um, and if you're at a social economic lower level of income, it does impact because you don't get that opportunity for education. So we thought, let's start at the base. Let's start with parenting and children and working together and bringing them in to a climate that fosters success. One of the things that I've noticed and one of the things that I'd like to see more of is if we create a climate for success, our children and families will attain that success. Does it take time and generations? Absolutely. I'm not going to tell you it's an easy job, but I am very proud of my track record there as um, the, the head of social services commented, Pat Demos, who is in charge of all our parenting opportunities, said that I had the best turnout um, for six weeks continuously, and that's a big commitment. But I made sure that I was on the phone calling those parents or knocking on their door, offering a ride, getting them there. We'd have a meal. We'd get a chance to know each other. We'd work side by side. So those are the kinds of things that I think we need to continue to do in this community. And you're going to see opportunities then also come available for uh, uh, education for parents as well. The next step that I'd like to see really quick is I would like to see us get some of our uh, uh, people from our colleges come in and offer classes right there at the school when we do have these opportunities. So I think it's another partnership we can grow on. Thank you. Mr. Fong? I think, uh, excuse me, obviously we're looking at uh, the median income and the highest attained education, educational level. Obviously, this is something that, uh, like you said, turns on the lights and rings the bells and blows the whistle.